Hello, so today we're going to start this primary colored popsicle collage. And it's, um, we're going to paint uh, one paper with the three primary colors for our popsicles, and then we'll paint the background paper with um, all the lines that we studied and um, looked at in kindergarten. All the different kinds of lines, wavy, bumpy, straight, zigzag, and broken. And you're going to uh, review those and paint those onto the background of the paper. So the way that we're going to start this is you're going to start with a small white piece of paper. First thing you need to do is write your name and the day you have art. Day A, day B, day C. Then you're going to flip it over and you're going to use a four inch ruler. And the reason I call this a four inch ruler is because it's four inches wide. It's definitely not four inches long. It's much longer than that. And this four inch ruler is gonna help you break up the small paper into three equal parts. You're not gonna turn your paper tall ways like this because if you look, these two spaces are skinnier than this ruler. But if you turn your paper horizontal like this, now you can see you have three equal spaces, the ruler space and the two spaces on the side. So you wanna get the ruler right in the middle of your paper. You don't wanna have it scooted over to one side where you have a skinny part, a big part, and a medium part. Try to find the middle as best you can. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it should be pretty close. Look at it with your eye, and then you're gonna hold the ruler down firmly, and you're gonna draw a vertical line against the ruler, a nice straight vertical line from the top of your paper to the bottom of the paper. And before you move your ruler, you're gonna do it again on the opposite side of the ruler. Then when you move your ruler, you have three equal rectangles that are the same size. Now you're ready to paint. So you're gonna get a manila paper, put it under your work. You're going to get a water basin and a paint tray. And I have two different paintbrushes in here just because we're gonna use that smaller paintbrush later. So you're gonna use this large paintbrush uh, I think you should start with yellow. Yellow is the lightest color. Yellow is the um, color that sometimes gets messy. You can see there's a little bit of orange at the bottom here. So if you have a messy yellow, what you do is you get your paintbrush wet, one person at your table, swish it around. You can see that orange is starting to go away. Rinse your paintbrush off, get fresh water on it, swish it around again. And you can see, voila, I have a nice bright yellow just from that. Now you might have to do that a few more times if you have green or brown or something on there. Mine wasn't too messy, but if yours is a very messy yellow, you might have to do that quite a few times, five or 10 times before it becomes clean. So once yellow is clean, everyone at your table is gonna need to take turns because I want you to paint yellow first. So you're gonna take your paintbrush and you're gonna swirl it around. And remember with temper cake, I want you to swirl it around a lot so that you get a bright, dark paint on your paintbrush and that it's not mostly water and I accidentally kind of splattered yellow in this middle spot, so I'm gonna paint this middle spot yellow where I accidentally splattered. Um, you can paint any of these rectangles yellow. It's your choice which one you paint, what color. We're gonna cut them out later anyway, and so you'll be able to make that choice and turn those, change that order around later. So swirl your paintbrush around, carefully paint in the rectangle with dark, heavy paint nice and solid no white paper poking through tempered cake dries pretty quickly so you should be able to rinse your paintbrush off run it across the teeth in the bottom of your water basin before you move on to your next color get it completely clean and then you should be able to paint the next color next to the yellow without it bleeding too much because temper does dry really clear so if you have too much water in your paintbrush when you go to paint red it looks almost pink so you need to make sure with all your colors red yellow and blue that you swirl it around and get a nice dark heavy color. More paint on your paintbrush than water. You need water on the paintbrush because the cakes are dry. So you need water to get the cakes wet to get the paint out of them. But you need more paint on your paintbrush when you go to paint your paper. I'm running out of water. My paint is getting pretty sticky so I just quickly dip it in the water, get a little bit of water on my paintbrush, swirl around again. <clears throat> And now my paintbrush is starting to move across my paper a little bit easier. So now the last primary color is blue, so I need to run my paintbrush across the teeth, clean off my paintbrush completely. I don't want to get red or yellow on this blue. Swirl around and get lots of paint on my paintbrush. 
Now since your whole table is using the same three colors, you might need to wait your turn to get to the paint. And when you're swirling around the paint, try not to splatter onto somebody else's artwork. So now you're done with the first day. You're gonna put your paintbrush in the bowl of water and you're gonna take your brown paper and your painted paper and you're gonna put both of these on the drying rack to dry. And um, we'll get this cleaned up. Either I'll come around or I'll give you a job to clean up um, this paint and this water. When you're ready to do your background paper, you're gonna get a large white paper and you need to write your name on the paper. And the day you have art, day A, day B, day C, you're gonna flip it over. And then you're gonna need, I'm gonna give you a smaller paintbrush so that you can paint some lines on your paper neatly. And I'm gonna start with yellow. My water's a little messy from my primary colored paper for the popsicles. You might have clean water. Um, either way, you wanna do yellow first. Now yellow doesn't have to be at the top of your paper, but you wanna do yellow first while your water's fairly clean and you can keep the yellow clean. And remember, if you have a messy yellow, you just keep re-dipping and swirling, re-dipping and swirling with fresh paint to clean it off. Now, I'm not gonna put yellow, my yellow line at the top of my paper because just because I'm using yellow first doesn't mean it has to go at the top. So I think I'm gonna put it down the middle and I'm gonna do a straight line. I want you to demonstrate each of the lines that you learned last year in kindergarten. Straight, wavy, zigzag, broken, dotted, bumpy, castle. If you run out of space and can't use all of them, that's okay. So now I'm done with yellow. I'm gonna rinse my paintbrush off, use the teeth at the bottom of the water basin to clean it off, and then I'm gonna do a new color. At this point, it doesn't matter what colors I do in what order, because yellow is the lightest. I wanted the cleanest water I could possibly have. After this, it's probably okay, whatever I do. So I'm gonna do a bumpy line with the green, as neat as possible. You're gonna get, um, I'm probably gonna have you have some black paper under your work so you don't accidentally paint the table like I'm doing. Now I'm done with the green, so I rinse my paintbrush off, run it across the teeth at the bottom of the water basin, and do zigzag. Remember, zigzag looks different than wavy, so make sure they look very different. Zigzag is pointy, like alligator teeth, sharp teeth. Wavy is like water in the ocean. It's curved, not pointy like zigzag. So I'll do wavy right underneath zigzag so you can see the difference. Almost like hills, not like pointy mountains. Okay, I could do dotted, castle, castle line. And I think I'll do, I've done all the rainbow colors. I could do brown or black, but I don't want to use brown or black. So I'm going to do green again at the bottom. It's at the top, so I'm going to do it at the bottom. And I'm going to do dotted. Okay, so this paper is finished. It's gonna go on the drying rack to dry and we'll clean up your paint mess. And then we will get our painted primary color paper back and it's nice and dry now. So you're going to cut these rectangles apart. You're gonna cut red away and yellow and blue away from each other. And then you're gonna flip it over now your name is gonna be scribbled on here somewhere, so um, try to ignore that. And then you're gonna start at the bottom of the rectangle and you're gonna draw a hill that goes up, around, and back down. And I try to make it as wide, very close to the width of the painted paper. I don't, I don't wanna make it too skinny. Do another hill. And I make sure it reaches near the top so I have a nice, good size popsicle. I don't want you to have three popsicles, one super tiny, one really skinny. Um, try to keep them about the same size and same shape. And then you're gonna carefully cut them out. And then these scraps will get recycled. You're gonna flip them over. And I think the first thing that I want you to do is, um, put a little white highlight at the top. So you're gonna get um, a temper cake and you're gonna get water and a small paintbrush. And this paintbrush is pretty messy from painting the background, but you'll probably, I will give you clean water and a clean paintbrush. 
You're gonna swirl this around on the white temper cake in the cup. White is not in our temper tray, so it's in a separate cup. And you'll just hold the cup and swirl this around, get a lot of paint on your paintbrush. And then you're just gonna add a slight little swoop highlight at the top of the popsicle. And if you rub back and forth on this tempera, it gets wet again and it gets on your paintbrush and changes the white. So if I went back and forth on this blue, it would turn light blue. So you just wanna do a quick sweep. Just one quick swoop and be done. You don't wanna go back and forth, okay? Then you're gonna flip these over and the tempera dries pretty quickly. As long as you don't put it on too wet, you should be okay to flip it over fairly quickly after you paint. And then you're going to glue three popsicle sticks at the bottom of your popsicles. And I think about half of the popsicle sticks should stick off the bottom. So you can take your glue, put a nice bead of glue, a nice line of glue, halfway up the popsicle stick, flip it over, and glue it down, sticking off the bottom of your popsicle. All right, and then this last step is gonna get a little tricky. I've got a bit of a glue mess that I made here, so I'm just gonna take a paper towel and clean that off. Okay, try to keep your popsicle stick straight. This popsicle stick keeps wanting to go crooked. So try to keep them straight up and down, okay? So now you're going to get your dry background paper. So that original background paper that you painted, it's dry now. And you're gonna lay that down and then you're gonna start with your middle popsicle. Whatever color you want to be in the middle is fine. It doesn't matter to me, so I'm just gonna pick this one right here on the right-hand side. And I want you to be very generous with your glue. So you're gonna do a frame of glue around the top of your popsicle. Don't put it too close to the edge of the popsicle or the glue will squirt out. I want you to put a line of glue across the bottom and then on top of the popsicle stick. And this is gonna be a little tricky because your popsicle stick isn't quite stuck to your popsicle. So you're gonna need to flip it over quickly and get it back on your paper. And this is gonna be my middle one so that I know where to put my other two. So start with your middle popsicle stick your middle popsicle and glue it vertical straight up and down on the middle of your paper. You might need to hold it down because the glue gets the painted paper wet and then the painted paper tries to curl up and starts to curl up on you. And then again a frame of glue across this popsicle, a line of glue on the popsicle stick, flip it over quickly and put it in the middle of this space here. Try to find the middle of that space, that side of my paper. I'm gonna try and line up the bottoms of the popsicles, hold it down so the paper doesn't curl, and then I'll do my last popsicle. And there you have your really cute finished primary colored popsicle collage. Good job.